Well, um, it's, it's dreams come true time. Uh, and actually, I've, I've been waiting for years to catch up with you. Uh, Steph and Dennis, Paul Robinson in the flesh. Come on, Rob, my side. shake your hands. <laughs> How are you? Good night, good night. Um, I mean, it's been an incredible 30 years for you. Mm, mm. Did you ever think it was going to last this long? Yeah, I get asked that question all the time. And the answer, the simple answer is no, I didn't. I thought it was going to last a very, very short time and didn't make a total crack out of me. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's face it, the very first episode, they had you dressed up as what? A baby. A baby in a nappy. Blowing drunk. <laughs> it's, 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 in fact, it's the only time I think in Neighbours that I've been able to have a character drunk to that degree. Because up, uh, since then, it's always, you, if you were drunk, it didn't matter how drunk, you had to sort of be you know, G-rated drunk. Yeah. Yeah, Bailey recently, I suppose, was, has been the most yeah, drunk yeah. one. And that was just a little bit of sway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh. Um, what's it been like to actually play the same character for, for three decades? Well, I haven't. I mean, I haven't, I haven't. I've been involved in the same character for three decades, but I took uh, a 12-year hiatus, um, which was really nice because it, I think if I hadn't have had that 12-year hiatus, I probably wouldn't be doing it now. I probably would have given it up after, you know, quite some time ago. Um, so, uh, I, I, as I said, I've been involved uh, in being the same character over that three decades, but I've done an awful lot of work in between. And uh, again, in answer to the question as far as, it, it's been great, it's been really good. Because the good thing about it is Paul has gone through a metamorphosis, more than one metamorphosis. <laughs> metamorphosis. Um, well, yeah, metamorphosis. <laughs> um, and and so yeah, so it's been challenging as uh, as the actor to you know come up with new ways to play Paul. But then it's been it's had, hasn't been that challenging because the scripts are written for me and they go right, okay, you can do that. But, but there was you know that very very large transition from uh, Mr. Nice, Happy Girl, Lucky Paul, the student engineer or the engineering student, um, to business. Apprentice Tycoon um, heading towards Mr. Evil. Mm. I, it, there, there was a point at which I think they tried to, he, he got too evil. And yep. they did try and bring it back a bit. Yeah, didn't they? yeah. And, uh, well, they didn't try, they did. They yeah. brought it back instantly in the form of a brain <laughs> tumor. tumor. Which actually, you know, it's really funny because I, I always thought, oh, that's a bit far fetched. And, and you know, other actors went, what? Well, and then I did the research on it um, and, and brain tumors and the results of before and after. And it's actually a, a realistic thing because there's, there's the cases where people uh, gain super intelligence uh, before the brain tumor is removed um, or they, there's, uh, you know, th th there's different states of mind um, come about because, and when you think about it, it is because, you know, the brain tumor, it, it, there's pressure on the brain and it's obviously it's going to sort of uh, interfere with things. So it would, and when you consider that the brain is the, the, uh, the control of the entire body, basically, um, of course it's going to change things, it's going to change the thinking and the persona and all of that. So it actually, it, uh, until I did that research, I thought, yeah, far-fetched. And then afterwards, I thought, you know what, actually that's quite true. He's, he's gone through a, a lot of injury as well. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of hospital time for Paul. Yeah, obviously. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got his own regular beer, I think. <laughs> yes, and it always seems to be Carl who looks after him. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Carl, a miracle work. He hasn't turned my foot back on yet, my leg, I should say. <laughs> yeah, that's coming, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. one day. Yeah, but... one, one day the producer's going to go, oh, this one leg business is just too much. Ah, oh, here's an idea. <laughs> well, didn't you get to a point where you were like, this is too much? So you swapped legs. No, I did it as a gag. I wanted to see if anybody paid any attention. And I never told anybody. Obviously, I couldn't because you know, I would have gone all over the coals. But uh, I felt for one day, I limped on the other side. And, the, and when I say limped, I mean, Paul's limp is not very pronounced at all. Again, research of amputees and prosthetic leg uh, owners. Um, and I discovered, uh, a, you know, and a classic example is uh, a comedian, an Australian comedian, Adam Hills, mm. who is... Um, you know, deficient to the tune of one leg or one foot, um, and you would not know at all unless he points it out. You would not know that that man uh, only had one leg. And uh, and I, I, in fact, I remember once I was flying back from here, and there was a girl, a youngish girl, 18, 20 or something like that, and she had a prosthetic leg, same one as as where Paul's is, just below the knee. Um, you would not know the way she, her, her gait, you would not know that she had a prosthetic leg. The only reason you knew is because she was wearing hot pants that day. Um, but she worked, worked perfect, perfectly normal. And, and, and uh, in fact, my kids and I were at the supermarket the other week, and there was a guy with two prosthetic legs. 
um, and he walked, walked perfectly normally. I mean, when I say perfectly normally, you know, he didn't. He wasn't you know, the, yeah. the old tin man thing. Um, and my kids were fascinated because they were like, metal legs. And I was like, don't stare, guys. But yeah, you know, there you go. I, I covered the Paralympics, uh, so you know I, I've seen what those guys can do. Yeah. But sorry, getting back to it, yes, yeah, so I did. But just for a gag one day, I wanted to see if anybody paid attention, and one person did. I can't, and don't ask me who they were, but somebody from the UK actually wrote in and said, "Are you limping on the other leg?" That and I went, got me. I, 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 yeah. I wonder if that might have been me. <laughs> actually, Quite possibly. Which actually, which leg is it? It's, 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 the, right. it's the right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah.